What did it do? Baby, she was that Jones reaction. You got when Mike Tyson and Fifty Mac come damage on a Frazier. Responsibility, not just Joe Frazier's being fact. Also, to entertain. Absolutely, any fighter in general would think their main objective is to make the audience go home and let them know they had witnessed something that was incredibly special. So he's always sounding like this. Welcome back to the. Got a thick ass neck. Look at that fucking neck. If he doesn't die, you knew nothing was pumping steroids in that neck. On today's video, we look back at the night a prime ready Iron Mike took on the son of a heavyweight boxing legend. With my pop in my corner, I don't see any way that I can lose. Uh, this is Joe Frazier Jr. Tyson extremely enraged, exasperated, and eager to close the show as quickly as possible. Let's take a look. The 30 second massacre. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know if I'd step in the ring with that nigga. Look at his fucking neck. By the fall Sticking of my six, damn thigh. the Tyson hype train was back to full throttle after his impeccable one-round annihilation job over fellow contender Reggie Gross. That it's very difficult uh, for the kid who throws hydrogen bombs to get him experience. To this point, that nigga's hair. Oh my fucking gosh, that's one sleazy slime back looking Tyson haircut. Team Tyson is still matching their prodigy relatively lightly, despite every boxing fan, including Mike himself, convinced he had the tools to mix it up with the current champions in the heavyweight division. I'm starting to think that you're unstoppable. Do you feel that you're the best heavyweight in the world, that you can step in with anybody right now? Yes. I feel I am the best fighter in the world right now. Watching a fighter as brilliant as Mike Tyson being steered away from a title shot was frustrating for the boxing community. Yet, in retrospect, his managers, Jim Jacobs and Bill Caton, were not only aiding Mike in building an impressive unbeaten record, they were, more importantly, ensuring the development of a raw young talent that, once he secured his title shot, was the complete finished article. I'm the leader. I look everything over carefully. And then I send him in to do the job. The former Hall of Fame legendary heavyweight champion, Joe Frazier, who famously beat the previously unbeaten Muhammad Ali in 1971's Fight of the Century, took an entirely okay, against the grain approach as to how a fighter should be developed during his managerial years post-retirement. I'm not in charge, you know. If they say fight King Kong, I'm ready. All I have to do is get my body in condition. And oh, so his name is not even Joe Frazier Jr. It's Smoke and Joe it is fucking if you're gonna Marvin Frazier. They just shit at that. No point in beating the Fuck, bush. man. The fighters he trained, such as James Shuler, Burt Cooper, and Son Marvis, quickly found out once they were under his tutelage. If I couldn't train these boys, or I couldn't live with these boys, I'd be the first guy to get the hell out of the way. Marvis embraced his father's philosophy, where after a very brief amateur career, he began fighting legitimate top contenders inside his first 10 fights as a pro. Against Sasuke, as he backs him into the ropes above us. Two lefts and a right hand, all by Marvis Fraser. That dude looks like he fucking belongs in a James Brown belly slicing hand. His first few fights. In doing I don't know so, what he, was doing he never in the looked like a world beater. More so, a man determined to at least fill a sliver of his father's boots. Joe pushed his son to the complete deep end in 1983, having Marvis face off with the number one heavyweight in the world, Larry Holmes, who at the time had a record of 44 and 0. Shit. Shit. As many experts predicted, the fight was a complete mismatch, and Larry made sure every spectator at ringside, including Marvis's father, knew it. That nigga hit a whoop. He hit his ass whoop! He hit his ass whoop! Pushing him even harder in the direct aftermath, where Marvis regained momentum with impressive wins over Quick Tillis and Bone Crusher Smith. Whether the Frasers genuinely felt they were ready for Tyson or not, Marvis's ranking among the sanctioning bodies put him in the direct firing line of the most devastating contender in world boxing. Twenty-four wins, twenty-two knockouts. Damn. Tyson met Frazier at the Civic Center in Glens Falls, New York, in July 1986. This is long My mom was sixteen. Damn it. Introductions. Angry and eager to one up what Holmes did a couple of years prior. He later admitted that he was scared, but wanted to project his fear onto Marvis, who, by the looks of things, had the exact same idea. Three judges. The referee does not score. Scoring on the round system. Supplemental. How should not be scared? Scoring system if the rounds wind up even. Look at those and fucking uppercuts. He's looking for one shot. Uppercut. 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 Oh shit, bitch. Oh 
Oh shit, bitch! Oh, oh, oh no! Oh, hit it out! Hit it out again! Hit it out again! Oh shit! Oh, he's sleep! He's sleep! He's sleep! Oh no! Tyson's fastest ever victim. Fuck no! Look at this shit, man! Look at this shit, man! Oh, 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 oh! Look at that hit! Oh, that was the one right there. That one right there. That one, that one right there. Put that. He put that. He put that in the motherfucker. Come. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. No. This is this is brutal. Oh. Oh gosh. That man is absolutely he's in a day. He's in a damn coma Frazier right now. Frazier became Tyson's fastest ever victim. Out on his feet, absorbing devastating power punches that left him slumped in the corner inside 30 seconds. Marvis is badly hurt at this point. Uppercut again. And there, Marvis is out on his feet. Everything after He was out he before he down. went down. He was just getting fucking pelted. That was a dumbass down. rough, bro. Lumped rough should have stepped his, in. On paper, best win to date. But once he did, he sent a chilling message to the current champions. And I came out and I was confident. I came out. I knew the fight. I thought the deep moment I was going to stop him in the first round. In your mind, if your managers Jim Jacobs and Bill Cate and your trainer Kevin Rooney came to you and said, "Mike, we think you're ready for a title shot tomorrow," do you would you agree with them at this point? Most definitely. Anytime if my manager and my trainers feel that I'm confident and they're willing to put me in a title and they show I can beat the champion, I'm sure I can beat them also. Of the three champions, he always like sounded like that's crazy. Anybody my trainer put me in with because I'm confident I can beat any fighter in the world. With only 21 fights to his name, Marvis Frazier hung up the gloves for good, proud of what he achieved in such a short amount of time. I'd personally never blame Joe. That man fucking uppercut his ass into retirement. For Marvis's man. career trajectory. On paper, it looks naive, but the truth is, he had unconditional love for his son, and I think both were just living a bit of a delusion regarding his potential. Marvis has kept a low profile since retirement, but in this interview from a few years ago, he admits that trying to follow in his father's footsteps was always going to be a near impossible task. I think he still got that fucking swollen mark on his on his right side, his right fucking side from that fucking hit. Because if you've seen from the video, uh, um, as he was going down... Uh, Tyson threw a left hook. I think that left hook still got his ass swollen. Look at that you know, shit. To, to, to stand in the shadow of Joe Frazier. And to me, I always, well, I always thought I was standing in the light because it's a great legacy. You know, my father could have uh, been, you know, a drug dealer. He could have been in prison. He could be a bum on the streets, on Skid Row. But my dad is smoking Joe Frazier. Hey, y'all saw that right there. That's when um, Tyson inflicted maximum da damage on Frazier.